Okay, let's jump into flex pitch here a little bit. So most of you guys with Logic will be dealing with this. So if you don't know about flex in Logic or GarageBand, it's a, it's a cool, cool thing. Uh, it's a sort of hourglass looking icon. Uh, Command F uh, brings up the flex indicator, flex state indicator for each one of the tracks. And you know, you can enable or disable um, for each individual track. So, so I'm working with this, um, this flex pitch uh, track down at the bottom of what you see here. Let's unmute this and let's listen to what we've got. The moon was sitting high in the middle of the sky. So the glow covered the floor all around me. I'm okay, so yeah, back to our original performance. And what we need to do here, again, to, to get flex pitch to work in the first place um, is we after, let me turn these all off. Okay, so after clicking here, the hourglass, enabling flex pitch for the track um, and making sure that it doesn't bring up one of these other options, you know, because we're specifically wanting to work with pitch here and not time. So we're making sure that flex pitch is selected. And then we're gonna go to our editors. Again, E is a shortcut in the logic, like so. Okay, and what the heck, I still don't see the information. So you go to the hourglass again here. So it's a lot of hourglasses you have to remember to click. Um, and then you've got, you know, something that looks pretty similar um, to what we were talking about a few moments ago with Melodyne. Okay, so we've got these sort of like blob looking things. And, um, you know, the, the cool thing about flex pitch and maybe even cooler than Melodyne is, well, first of all, it comes with a program. But the fact that you've got these six sort of anchors, okay, so you've got one for, we talked about pitch drift earlier, okay, that's where you like a scoop into a note or a fall off of a note, perhaps. That's the pitch drift amount, I can click and drag to change, you know, how dramatic the scoop or the fall is right there, okay, those anchors. Gain is, um, is amplitude, okay, so I can, you can see that the waveform is actually calculating there what impact that's going to have on a particular note. So that's a cool feature. You know, time compression expansion, another cool aspect of a lot of these programs. We're talking about pitch, but you can do a lot with uh, in Melodyne with um, compressing or expanding the duration of notes and the algorithm is fantastic. Um, so vibrato, this is, this is a big one. We talked about that. Remember in Melodyne, it's called pitch modulation, but here it's called vibrato and we could just minimize that or you know, maximize it for a particular note. What's going on there? The moon was sitting high in the middle of the sky. So yeah, you can tell that something's been done there. So I'm probably going to want to um, reset that. Guy saw the. Okay, there it is. Yeah, she's singing pretty straight. The glow down. covered the floor all around me. Oh, the glow covered. Darn it, Christine! You need to give me worse singers to do this stuff with. I'm at a leap function. Okay, okay, a little I wavering. I don't have any bad singer. I know you don't. So you guys train your vocalists well. You and, Can you, and, you're probably yeah. gonna show them this, but if you wouldn't mind show them, showing them how you would um, like elongate a note as well. There you go. So I'm just, I'm just at the edge. Yeah, I'm just clicking at the, the edge of the note here and I'm doing this. Now what, you know, what might happen here, you led me to a, a point, Christine, is that you might need to chop up a note into two to sort of make that work. High in the middle of the sky, so the glow covered the floor. Yeah, so somewhere that has a scoop, we might want to turn that into two notes. Well, we can do that also. You'll see here that I've got some tools, right? I've got my primary tool and I've got my command click tool. So for my command click tool, I usually have scissors um, set. So if I hold command, you'll see that I've got my scissors and I want to create a note transition right there. And then, you know, maybe, just maybe, that's where I want to do what Christine was talking about so that I am emphasizing that scoop. Oh, the glow covered the floor. Or maybe emphasize it even a little bit more. Oh, the glow covered the floor. You guys hear that? I've got a longer scoop into that note now. Ooh, can and, you minimize it? Sh well, sure, yeah, I mean, either way like that. So the scissors tool lets you do that. And then conversely, um, you can use the glue tool. G is, I've got it, I think G is a default shortcut. So 
if I wanted to put those notes back together again, you know, I could just do a reset, but another way of doing it would be just to take these. And there's a lot of instances where you might want to do this and then just click. And now those are, you know, those are being observed as a single note without a transition now. In general, if something's really chromatic, like this tune is, you know, pretty chromatic and active. Um, I, I tend to chop the notes up more, but if it's something that's more sustained and smooth and I want to sort of um, keep a lot of the inflections, uh, the musicality, um, that's where I might glue more notes together. Um, but, you know, I can still come in and And make the you know the subtle pitch corrections there. I'm using the fine pitch arrow or sorry uh, anchor. Form and shift has to do with uh, this sort of like the sound of the vowel. Uh, it's a it's a bit more subtle. Let's see if we can do something really radical there. But it's a way of making a, a syllables darker or brighter actually. So all the globe covered the floor. That's mellowed out. It's mellowed out even more. Oh, the gold covered the floor. That's really radical. We'd never want that, but you guys can hear there that it changes. Oh, the gold covered the timbre of the vowel. Oh, the gold covered the floor. That makes her sound like she's like four years old. So, that's flex pitch. Uh, yeah, there might be some questions about this one. Can you do me questions? a favor and go to the very last note of the section? Uh, the blue. Where's that? Let's see. The warm beyond the glue. That one? Christine? Yes. It, and can okay. you make that note like really long? I just want to see what it would sound like. Uh, the end of that note, in other words? Okay. Well, I'm just going to do what I think you want me to do. Which is that? Is that what you're wanting me to do? Yes. Bloom. Long. I mean, it's longer now, right? Yeah, cool. So if, um, you know, if I'm editing vocal jazz chart or something and somebody cut off too early or too late, we can stretch the audio. Yeah, you know, I want to show one more thing before I forget, which is so similar to what I did with the pitch macro and Melodyne, which is you can just grab all these things, right click or control click, and then just set to perfect pitch and bam, it'll grab everything. Again, you wanna to listen to what it does. Don't don't just trust that it's gonna do everything right because it's it's taking every note and it's gonna it's gonna drag it or constrain it to whatever's closest on the grid. And that might not, it might go the wrong way. Okay. All right, flex pitch. I'm gonna close out of this session unless there's any more questions about it. Uh, and I got one more thing to show you guys and uh, all right, let's come back to this really nice vocal performance on It's Something. And uh, this shouldn't take me more than a couple seconds because I don't think anybody in here is necessarily going to do this. Um, let's get our con context of what this sounds like again. You and I got something. All right, so it's this thing again. And notice that I've got an instrument track here with some MIDI below it. Um, RT stands for real time. I'm using pitches, uh, MIDI pitches, to force um, the, uh, the singer to sing certain pitches. So it's a, maybe a little more creative, but I tell you, I used this recently on a project um, over the summer. It saved me so much time, essentially just forcing all the pitches to a particular you know, note because sometimes if you don't do things that way, again, it, the grid will pull things the wrong direction. The advantage of what I'm gonna show you now is that that's not gonna happen. It's gonna, it's gonna push it, it's gonna pull it to a finite note. So you need to have a MIDI file, which I did, the soprano, the green here. Um, and, and then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you guys that I've set up this plugin. This is by a developer called Waves. It's an Israeli developer. Uh, that's, you know, really been around for a while. They make some great plugins and um, they'll try to get you on their update program. That's the only thing about Waves. Uh, but they, they make some great stuff and I've used this real-time um, version of their, their uh, pitch correction plugin. So here's what it looks like. And I'm not going to get into how to set all this up, 
Uh, it's a little tricky and I can find the document if anybody really wants it. You have to set up, again, it's kind of complicated. You have to set up what's called a side chain here. Anybody here who's into contemporary music knows, you know, side chain compression, yeah, blah, blah, blah. Um, but you have, to, you have to sort of aim or direct the MIDI to the audio. You have to tell, you know, I, audio, I want you guys to, I want you to read uh, these targeted pitches uh, from the, the MIDI. So what you get uh, unpitch corrected sounds like um, this. And I've got the audio set such that you won't hear what it sounds like. Let me, yeah, it has to run through here for now. How about I do this? I'll just turn you and I got something. Okay, so there it is without the correction. I crank the correction. You The settings aren't great, but here, hopefully if there's a light bulb moment, this is the one for you guys. So I can come into the MIDI here and let's say I want to do something. Like this. You and I got something. <laughs> yeah, so it's kind of cool. I mean, if you if you needed to harmonize something really quickly, that's a possible application for this. Um, and again, if you've got a, something with a lot of really quick running notes, like she does later on here, I think it is. You and I got Turn off my cycle mode. There it is. All right. So yeah, I remember, Christine, we, we, we did something here to the chart. So these MIDI notes reflect the original chart. And I, I can't even remember what you guys did, but it was something like maybe putting it up an octave. I can't remember, but I can drag all these things. And, and now I've changed all the pitches for that selection. Okay, I don't know how much you guys will be using this, but I wanted to show it to you. And then the other thing you guys could do is, uh, let me mute these guys is, and I've had students do this before, is you could come into this audio region and I've got flex or I need to get flex enabled for this one if I don't, yeah, it's enabled. And I'm going to make sure that MIDI in is switched on. I've got a MIDI keyboard attached. I'm gonna, I'll flip my camera around so you can see what I'm gonna do here. Let me go back to that first phrase. And okay, so, so here's the idea. So it starts off with a, a G sharp. You guys can see that that first pitch is a G sharp. So what I'm doing here, and again, you need to have flex pitch and this, this is critical, this MIDI in enabled. But what I can do here is, let me see if it's working first. Yep, it is. If you're not seeing the pitch blobs, um, just go ahead and try selecting flex pitch it again. It'll, it'll probably show them up. Um, MIDI in is turned on and I'm going to change that first note to something else. So actually, if you look at, I know you're looking at my screen here. Um, let me stop my share for a second and I'm back with you guys here and I'm going to play something different here. You guys can see my keyboard there. So it starts on a G sharp, but I'm going to do something else. I'm going to go like E. Oh boy. This might be too much for you to coordinate. <laughs> it's going to be pretty wild sounding. All right. So I just entered in new notes um, for that material. Let me share my screen again. And let's hear what the poor, <laughs> the poor singer is doing now. All right. And I got something. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, Christine, it makes, this makes me think of what you were talking about, like in terms of doing this in real time. So anybody who's really into this, you can actually be playing along on your MIDI keyboard singing, you know, single pitch was mentioned earlier and go to town on this kind of stuff, you know, do all kinds of wild stuff. So you just need to make sure again that that MIDI in is on or, or indicated in red. So it's a few steps to remember.